For more on the coronavirus uh, latest, let's bring in our guest. Joining us now is Dr. Zeke Emanuel, University of Pennsylvania Vice Provost for uh, Global Initiatives and former Obama Health Policy Advisor. Are, are you down at Penn, Zeke? Because nobody's allowed to be there. I know, I know from a family member who yes. is home. Uh, we, we decided yesterday to close down the campus. I happen to have a house in Washington, D.C. as well because of all the... Uh, political and policy activity, so I'm actually down here in Washington. What You've heard that previous conversation, and I'm sure you just, if I told you to just start talking and tell us <laughs> everything you know, you could do it, and, and we'd, uh, the whole segment could be filled up. So, uh, so let, just, let, uh, let me just defer to you. Uh, tell, let tell me make th three quick points, which Good. I think are really important. First, okay. it is true that for any individual, the risks are low, um, especially if you tend to be younger and healthier. Uh, this is concentrated. The uh, sort of severe side effects and mortality are concentrated among people who are over 60, 65 and have other complicating diseases, whether it's emphysema, uh, uh, heart disease, diabetes. That does seem to be the target group. So the, the good news, if you want to look for some silver lining here, is young people are not really affected uh, severely. And that's really, really important. Um, second, uh, how the health system responds, how the public health system responds, how the health system manages these patients is critical. Because if you look in China, recent reports out of Harvard show that places that have sort of not responded, not prepared, you have a much higher uh, complication rate and a much higher mortality rate than places that have actually prepared, do vigorous mitigation efforts, and have a functioning health care system that isn't overwhelmed. That's an important message for us. We have to get into the mitigation strategy, and we have to get into preparing our health care system so it doesn't become overwhelmed. If I were to say that there's a scarce resource here, it's the health care system. You're hearing everyone talk about let's push that curve down, let's spread it out, let's have the cases evolve more slowly. That is important mainly to overcome uh, or to prevent the health care system from being overloaded with too many cases and therefore have to do rationing, rationing of hospital beds, rationing of ICU beds, rationing of ventilators. And that's going to be a problem. The last thing I would say is it's really good that the Roche test is coming online. It's really good that Quest, uh, Diagnostic Lab Company, and uh, LabCorp are getting their tests online. But we have to pull testing out of the healthcare system uh, because you don't want people with coronavirus going to the emergency room or going to their doctor's office and spreading this around especially to health care providers. Remember, I said that the scarce resource here is the health care system, and we need to protect the health care system. It, so yeah. we need a lot that, of drive-in testing. Right. You don't want people that are already there for a reason. This place. Get, yeah, get, and then uh, someone with coronavirus coming in to get tested when they're already sick with what could be something. But what has to, what has to change over the next week and a half then, Zeke, for that to happen? Uh, we need a massive effort to get drive-in screening uh, so that literally people can do it in, you know, 10 or 15 minutes. They've opened up a drive-in screening place in Denver, and the reports are four-hour waits. Well, four-hour waits are not going to work for uh, many, many people who have to take care of kids, who have, uh, you know, are delivering uh, that food and other stuff that are essential ingredients. So we really need to get it so that they're every, these drive-in screenings are everywhere and that the people who are manning them are trained but they're not health care workers that are taking care of people in the hospital or at the doctor's office with other conditions. And I think that has to happen very quickly. I told a uh, Western governor this yesterday. It, it's really essential that we take this screening out of the health care system so we don't infect people while they're diagnosing this problem. Dr. Emanuel, there was a, a case yesterday. Um, you may have heard about it, the JetBlue flight where... Uh, someone who had gone in for a test for coronavirus a couple of days earlier got on a plane and flew down to Florida, got the results either right before he got on the plane or while he was on the plane, finding out that it was a positive confirmation of coronavirus. Like, what is going on for people to go in thinking they're in a position to actually get a test that they've been exposed enough potentially to put them at risk, but still going about their business and even traveling? Well, this is a, this is a problem of, you know, you want to know, what was he thinking? 
um, at, uh, to fly before you had confirmation of the test one way or another. Um, we really do need people to be responsible for their own behavior. This is a collective issue. Everyone is depending upon everyone else in the community to do the right thing. Um, and that was clearly the wrong thing. Right. Now, having said that, we should be very clear that not everyone on that JetBlue flight is in serious danger, um, and we should ma make quite clear. There have been studies about the transmission on planes. Uh, first of all, the air filter system on planes is better than the air filter system in your house. Um, they use HEPA filters, and they take out uh, these droplets. The second thing is, if you look at the spread of droplets, you know, it tends to be within a one meter area. Uh, a lot is going to depend on how well right. they clean those kind of planes uh, w near See, where that person people, was sitting. Do you want people traveling on airplanes? Um, I actually, <laughs> I think we're going to have to institute a lot of social distancing around the, the whole society um, to get so, our arms so around to, it. To, that, to but, that point, because we're all trying to assess the, the economic uh, yeah. repercussions of what's going to have to take place when it comes to social distancing, people not working or people working from home and all of those uh, things. In terms of the duration of this, how do you uh, see it? That is a really good question, and I think we need to be prepared for what I'm calling a yo-yo response. So we're going to close down and, you know, have Penn uh, go down, uh, have uh, other facilities uh, send workers home. At some point, you know, everyone's talking about the end of March, although we at Penn, it's the end of the semester. And then you're going to open these things up again, and travel's going to begin to continue. People are going to drive around, and you're going to see a increase again because people are going to be interacting. Do you um, think that things are going to open up at the end of March? Two weeks from now? I'm skeptical of that, uh, but I do think some organizations are going to try it. And, you, you know, you've heard uh, two-week shutdown of schools. Um, it, the time period is all over the place here. That's one of the problems, I think, uh, at the federal government. We need more consistent uh, guidance but from the, the federal government. But the charts that most people show you say that peak, for example, in New York, uh, and, and, and Governor Cuomo has talked about it in New York uh, being a hot spot, peak is, is closer to, to four weeks from now. Yeah, so four weeks from now would be middle of April. But you're hearing, I mean, that is part of my point. You're hearing different numbers and different items from different places. I think uh, Amazon said that people should work from home till the end of March. Um, now, people are going to reassess at the end of March. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that happens without national guidance and without clear advice is different people assess, have we reached the peak? Have we turned the corner? Uh, um, and they may do it ineffectively. Yeah. One of the things I'm worried about is this sort of spotty, haphazard response rather than a systematic response across right. the whole country. What about country. the subways in New York City, Chicago, other places? <laughs> that is a complication and problem. That's exactly the problem. Density is what where these things spread because people are right next to each right. other. What we mean by social distancing is three feet around you, hand washing, don't All shake right. your hands. Well, That's we gotta critical. Go. If, we need, right. if we need advice about what kind of bill, I'll call Rom. And then if I have career <laughs> problems, I'll call Ari. So it's like the Brothers Emanuel. Guys, you should set up a shop. Just one stop. Anyway, thanks, Zeke.